is once you've profiled your customers and understood what their behavioral profile is, then you can learn the rules of engagement, what to do, what not to do, what makes them comfortable, what makes them uncomfortable. Hello, Sales Nation, and welcome to the Salesman Podcast Live in partnership with HubSpot and recorded at the Sales Innovation Expo down in beautiful London. On this episode, we have Mark Erskine. He is a neuro selling expert, and that's exactly what we're talking about on today's show. We're talking about the neuroscience of sales. You can find out more about Mark over at sellerperformance.co.uk. We link to that and everything else that we talk about in the show notes to this episode over at salesmanpodcast.com. And with all that said, let's jump in to today's show. Mark, welcome Hi, to the Salesman you. Podcast. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on. We're going to dive into, I, I think <laughs> I'm going to prerequisite this conversation of there's probably a million things that we could dive into on this probably episode. Is. So we'll see where we go with it. But I want to have the overarching theme as relationship building, the process of it, and hopefully we can give the audience some tangible, practical uh, ways to go about it at the end yes. of the show. But first, set us up here. Are there any misconceptions about the ability to build relationships that are you know, commonly held that we need to squash before we get into the, the how-to of this? Yeah, I think there's a couple that come to mind, really. And the first and probably most important is the fact that I think people believe that there, there's a DNA, that, that either you're a great relationship builder or you're not. And actually, once you understand the, the developments in neuroscience, you begin to learn that you can actually manage it very successfully, and, and it's a learned process. So it sounds a bit of an anomaly to say you can learn to be a relationship builder somehow, but you can. You can certainly learn to improve your behavioral style and to engage peop with people much better um, than you've ever done before. So it's something that's hugely untapped. You know, and is this a, before we dive into the specifics, specifics, is this a process or is this more like emotional intelligence, for example, where you understand why you should do something and then you add context to it and you're trying to get your subconscious to allow you to see the opportunities to be more emotional intelligence, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit of both, to be honest. I mean, there are some, you know, what I like to call rules of engagement, yeah. you know, which is once you've profiled your customers and understood what their behavioral profile is, then you can learn the rules of engagement, what to do, what not to do, what makes them comfortable, what makes them uncomfortable, how they want to be seen, how they want to react in certain situations then you can learn that behavior. Um, you know, the, the, the difference is, and going back to my original point, I suppose, I mean, you can't change your personality. <laughs> but you can For manage better or your worse. No, yeah, yeah, but you can manage your behavior. We all manage our behavior every day, whether we're talking to the boss, whether we're talking to a customer, whether we're talking to a partner, we all intuitively do it. The brain's an amazingly clever thing, you know, and we are, we're only beginning to realize how, how clever it is, really you know, through all the developments in neuroscience. But, but, you know, the thing is that you can manage it. You can do it much better if you focus on it. It's like using any muscle. You know, if you actually build the muscle up and work at it, yeah. of course it gets stronger and, the, and performance improves. And your brain's exactly the same. So, so learning to do this stuff is a learned art. And uh, the sales industry has been very late to this, to this uh, area. You know, markets have been there for quite a while. They market products based on the persona of the customer um, that they're trying to sell to. But why salespeople think that intuitively they can do it on their own and they don't learn a process is a bit of a mystery to me. So is it perhaps that um, the stereotype of the salesperson is that they are perhaps more selfish, that they feel like, and, and this is a stereotype that we're trying to debunk on with the yes. sales podcast, but the stereotype is this alpha a man or a woman who goes in and they win the business and they're the lone wolf and they don't need any help from anyone and it's it's them There's winning the business that. is that part of, of the problem here it is part of the problem um but interestingly you know and i've been talking at some seminars you know the last couple of days and and um you know one of the major topics is is actually the way that the sales world has changed yeah. because certainly business to business sales is dominated by procurement professional procurement people they're a very different breed <laughs> And the, and the stereotypical salesperson of extrovert, well, actually, I mean, if you did, there's some research been done. If you do, did a wordle about how people describe salespeople, we all know the words that people come up with. Yep. Slimy, dishonest, distrustful, you know, all of those things, which are misconceptions. But unfortunately, some stereotypes of salespeople display those behaviors. It doesn't work anymore. Not with professional buyers. Professional buyers expect you to have 
subject matter expertise. Mm -hmm. You can't bluff it anymore. And uh, you know, learning to relationship build, learning to embrace neuroscience and bring this stuff through, should be part of the salesperson's toolkit. You know, as much as negotiating skills, as yep. much as presenting skills, or or objection handling, or whatever it may be, they've got to learn to 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 manage relationships, mm -hmm. especially when those two individual roles of salesperson, you know, which is typically the extrovert. Yep. versus the methodical, structured, logical, detailed procurement professional, <laughs> they are at the opposite ends of the spectrum. And opposites don't attract. <laughs> you know, they genuinely don't in terms of relationship building. We all know when we meet somebody, you connect or you don't connect. Within the first two or three seconds, mm -hmm. your brain is telling you, this is going to be okay. Or it's saying, this is going to be hard work. Um, and Why is that? Because that's a fascinating... It's the reptilian, it's what our instinctive brain is. Our, our, the, the first part of the brain that evolved is what's called the reptilian brain. And the reptilian brain is the instinctive brain, which takes in the messages before any rational thought takes place. It takes in all the messages and the emotional brain then kicks in. It takes in all the messages about body language, the look, the feel, the style. Are you a danger to me? Are you a friend to me? It takes in all of those messages and creates a reaction. And if you get that reaction in the first few seconds wrong, <laughs> you can lose it. We yep. all know we've met people who we get on with instantly. We meet other people who think this is hard work. And that's your brain telling you that the chemistry is right or not. And it's about your behavioral style. Now you can teach people to de-risk that. If you go to see somebody, a new customer for the first time, I can dive into their LinkedIn profile and work out what profile they are easily. So I'll stop you here because this is where there's going to be some real tangible, yeah. if we can run, I'm sure that it depends how many personality types there are. If there's yes. 50, we're not going to get through them all, of course. But just before we dive into the practical elements of yeah. all this and the implementation, is this about changing our behavior to become more appropriate to other people? Or is it more about understanding other people and being reactionary to them? Do you know what I mean? Is it, is it us okay. becoming more neutral so that we're suitable for a wider group of people? Or is it understanding them and all our focus on those? Right, uh, first part of the process is you have to understand yourself. Okay. So you have to understand what your natural behavioral style is. And uh, as we all grow up, we develop our own natural style through role models, through our parents, yep. through you know, key people in our lives, teachers, you know, all of those people influence. And we develop a behavioral style which works for us. Yep. And that could be one of the four behavioral styles. I mean, the ones that I use uh, with an organization, the profiling tool is with life orientations. They call it adapting, controlling, supporting, conserving. Adapting is the outgoing relationship focused person. Supporting is the quality focused, mm -hmm. doing everything fair and reasonably in a spirit of trust, uh, etc. Controlling is all about uh, taking action, getting results, making things happen, driving, assertive. Um, and conserving is about the logical, detailed, factual, evidential, you know. So we're all a blend of all of those styles. But as we grow up, we develop a preference for one or two and we use them productively. Yep. We neglect one or two potentially <laughs> and we don't use them at all. Yep. Most salespeople don't use the conserving, which is the detailed, logical, because they enjoy the relationship building mm -hmm. and, and it's the opposite of extrovert, introvert. So they don't enjoy that. So they typically, typically neglect that. And yet they're now dealing with procurement professionals where that's their normal style. Yep. They've got to be able to adapt. So you need to understand where you are personally to start with, understand your own profile, and then learn to profile other people. And what we do on the, on the process that, that we work with clients is to teach them how to profile other people. What are the... Um, energy level signs that indicate which profile they are. What language do they use? What communication style? Are they loud, forceful, direct? Yeah. Are they softly spoken, you know, um, etc. So we teach them all of those profiling tools, but that's, um, that takes a bit of time of course. for people to get used to it. You know, people can look at people in the public eye and get some of them straight away. Yeah. You know, if anybody looked at uh, Donald Trump, you'd I sort of say- I knew you were going to say Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, well, he sort of is in the public eye. Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, people would say he's controlling straight away. Yep. Uh, you know, the model that we use, however, talks about some work by a psychologist called Eric Fromm, who developed what's now widely accepted as 
the strength weakness paradox, which mm. is our biggest weaknesses come from overplaying our strengths. Mm. Donald Trump overplays his strengths. He's a man of action, but he takes it too far. Yeah. He sacrifices thought for action. He's dismissive of others and their opinions. Therefore, he doesn't take things into account. So LIFO and the model that we use actually teaches people about managing their excesses um, and making sure that you don't take things too far because it's not productive. Um, but you learn to identify those people. But you take another example. Um, and let me just stop here for a second. Yeah. Should we, if we are a, a controlling and an assertive person and we're dealing with a conservative person, which is for me in medical device sales is going from perhaps speaking to a surgeon to then uh, who loves the product, wants to buy it, thinks they have control of the budget, but they really don't. And yeah. then you go over to procurement and clearly their job is to have this tight fist of cash that yeah, they, don't want to, they don't want to give any of it out. No. And, and rightly so, because you know, government organization, yeah. we're, all, we're all paying into it and we're all proud of the NHS and, and what it's doing. But clearly it could, it could always have more money thrown into it. So their job is to not give it out if it's not going to improve uh, the patient True. outcomes or if it's not going to improve you know, numerous things that the surgeon perhaps isn't concerned about on the financial side. Yes. Is my goal then to be match the surgeon and then match the personality types yes. of the procurement officer? Yeah, in order to communicate and engage with them better, to understand their agenda. If you connect with somebody, they open up and they tell you more and you engage better and you find out more information and you find a point of connection. So you talk the same language as them and they feel more comfortable with you. If anybody feels more comfortable, they talk more. Yeah. And the more they talk, the more you find out and the more that you can match your solution to meet their need by understanding them. So you've got to match with individually. So the salesperson has got to become that stereotypical chameleon, yeah. the ability to be able to adapt to each. And you know, stereotypically, and as I talked about, adapting and controlling was the typical persona or behavioral style of a sales hunter. Mm -hmm. All about the relationship, but also about closing the deal and making it happen. Mm -hmm. With procurement professionals, that's the opposite end of the spectrum. It doesn't work with them. And actually there's some research being done by a guy called Adam Grant from the University of Pennsylvania who did research on salespeople. I'm interviewing Adam next week. Are you? Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> well, he did some research on salespeople and, and he profiled them on the introversion extroversion scale. Yeah. Yeah. And he plotted their sales results. And what he found was that people in the middle, which um, are now known to be called as ambiverts. Okay. And if you'd come across the nope. phrase, well, <laughs> you could be an ambivert have by far the better results, mm. by far the better results. So the profile of ch has changed for salespeople. You know, that stereotypical, um, you know, descriptor of a salesperson just, is, just doesn't cut the mustard any longer, mm. I'm afraid. And, and um, HR directors, sales managers and sales directors should start to think about the profile that they're recruiting for because the sales landscape has changed. The buyer's landscape has changed. You used to deal and sell to the person who was going to use your product. Yeah, so in that situation, your example, you might be selling in the years gone by to the surgeon. Yeah. Now, that's a very different sale. He could come from any orientation or behavioral style. Procurement typically will come from one. You've got to be able <laughs> to learn to do both. Okay, so how do we, and I'm sure this is a, a week-long yeah. workshop in itself. Yeah, yeah. But are there any takeaways you can give us here? So, because what I want to, with all of these shows is, the audience are driving to the office or they're driving to a sales meeting. I want them to be able to implement something from this episode right. and every episode in their next meeting. So with these four types, yes, being totally aware that it's a long process, lots of detail. This, yeah, lots of detail. Is there any is there any step by step process we can go through to uncover exactly the type someone is, so then we can relay and yeah. I, I, it, what's it, the best way? So that I, what's the best way to describe our own? personality change we don't want to change our personality no we don't perhaps no. you just want to we manage our behavioral style okay we perfect. become more adaptive to other people yeah and we bring that staying front congruent of mind. to ourselves as well yeah, and our absolutely, beliefs absolutely but, yeah. but we bring front of mind you have to consciously think about your how you're interacting with people yeah now the brain does it intuitively it does it <laughs> fairly well but it's like any muscle you, you know if you work it, it does it better yeah so work it work at it because it can be your differentiator you know, if you connect better than, you, than anybody else, you know, uh, you, you'll sell more. It's as simple as that. And that's always been true. People buy people. Yeah. You know, people say it's a cliche. It's a truism. They yeah. do. When was the last time you bought something valuable from somebody you didn't trust? You don't. You might buy something cheap from a market on a Saturday from somebody <laughs> you don't trust. 
but anything else you don't sure you need to be satisfied that this is this is why you know um, reviews on Amazon are so powerful you know people automatically up there because if other parts somebody else has bought it well next step is a b2b review marketplace yes I don't know if it exists right now I know it exists for certain things like CRM software and so clearly this is all coming so we are driving to our meeting. We're excited. We're yes. gonna we're gonna personality profile them, and then we're gonna change, uh, we as are. you describe it, our behaviour to suit them, and it, we're adding value to them. And we're yes, gonna we be able to add trust and build a deeper relationship. We walk into the room. They're sat behind the desk. We're gonna have the meeting. How do, or, or does this, does all this begin beforehand on LinkedIn? It begins beforehand on LinkedIn. Okay. So so you you can pretty much recognise. But but of course nowadays. You know, some LinkedIn profiles are what I call corporately sanitized. <laughs> <laughs> you take the personality out of yeah. them because you have to say this because yeah. that's the corporate identity and brand, which I get, but it's sad because <laughs> it takes away my, uh, my predictor. So it starts beforehand, but then it's about observation. Mm. You know, you must go in and you must right from the way that the person walks towards you, an initial step will give you a clue about their personality and their style and their behavioral style. How they dress, how they look, and how, then they, specifically, how they what, talk. What, what do each of these, so you've named three or four things then. Yeah. Let's focus on one or two of them. Okay. And what, what, what should we be looking for with their walk and then perhaps how they greet you and how they talk to you? Okay, how they greet and talk to you. If you looked at um, somebody from the supporting, which is the quality and the responsiveness and trust, reasonable, everything's got to be done right, mm. you know, ethically, principled, yeah. all of those sorts of things. They'll come towards you in a very um, steady, warm greeting. You know, it will be warm. They're, they're, um, the engagement that you've had before with them will all be to make sure that you get there okay and that you're, yeah, you're comfortable and they'll ask you, but, you know, do you need the, the facilities or, you know, you'll get all of that feeling sure. from them because they're very responsive to the needs of others um, and build that in. They're, so they'll be softly spoken. Their energy levels will be actually quite um, low, mm. yeah, because they, they'll be quite relaxed and open. So their body language will be open. You know, conversely, you know, the <laughs> controlling, the opposite of supporting, will be striding towards you. Yeah. You know, will be very few niceties, will be straight down to business. Glad you're here. Really important that we get some some meat mm. out of this today and to get some actions even before you've gone up the stairs in the lift <laughs> sure and you'll pick up the signs you know um, conversely adapting you know the the relationship focused people you'll uh, they'll start a discussion about whatever topic absolutely nothing to do with work you know that could be 10 or 15 minutes they'll be open their facial gestures will be very vibrant their talk will their the way they talk will have a lot of tone and pitch mm. to it and enthusiasm and you know you their body language for adapting people gives everything away yeah adapting people are actually very poor at controlling their body language a lot of sales people are and what does that mean does that mean that you are giving away what you're thinking yes. by how you're sat yes yeah i'm, I'm quite high adapting naturally uh, it's, it's part of my behavioral mm. style and, you know my my uh, you know anybody who knows me well has always said to me you're a complete giveaway. I know when <laughs> I know when you're fed up. I know when you're happy. Yeah. And I just give it away, because because it's you know my gestures, my facial movements, my demeanour gives away everything about. Me. And and would this be a a learnt skill in that it allows you to communicate with others and it allows others people then to say, Mark, why why are you down? Because you'd be sat there slightly slumped versus someone yeah, else might can, be trying to hide it because they don't want to show you emotions. You can use it both ways. You yeah. can use it both ways. But it is a learned behavior to profile others. That's the piece that takes a little bit longer mm. um, for people. You know, learning about themselves and learning a personal development strategy to manage and adjust their selling style yeah. to be more methodical potentially or to be more responsive or to be more relationship focused or to be more assertive. Mm. I mean, it's an interesting distinction between sales and account managers. New business sellers tend to be very assertive and dominant, you know, because it's about closing deals down. Account managers looking after a relationship over a long people, period of time tend to be very customer service oriented. And let me, and, let me and jump uh, in there, because is that, again, a learned skill that, is, is this that you're born that way and you end up in that role because you're having success in it? Because you naturally gravitate to the role that you're comfortable that matches your behavioral style. Because why would you want to do a job where you're having to manage your behavioral style every day, you naturally want to be doing the things that, that are comfortable for you. Yep. So you gravitate to a, an account management role from that perspective because you like 
you're that type of person. The difficulty is, and give you a real hard um, sales lesson here in the sense that most organizations today are asking their account managers to upsell and cross-sell new products or services to them. They're great at the relationship, people focus part of it, mm. but by nature it's the opposite um, orientation of controlling, which means they're not naturally assertive enough. Yeah. So they end up building a nice engagement and never closing the deal down. <laughs> Yeah, because they're not assertive enough to actually say, "Oh, we're going to do this now." <laughs> you know, can we do some business and make it happen? And and a lot of sales directors and, and national accounts directors are struggling mm. to asking people to do that, and they're thinking. And actually, what they should be thinking is, "Have I got the right, right profile for today's world?" For sure. And they probably haven't. And and long term, they need to be looking at adjusting what they're recruiting for. Short term, medium term, you can teach people the behavior. So people, if they've got uh, more ambiversion, are, are generally better at adapting uh, 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 as compared to if you are on the extremes of a behavior. Yeah, so. And is all of this, is the goal of all of this that it sinks into your subconscious and then after X months, years, yeah. you just do it? You just You're do not it. consciously no. looking at that individual no and labeling them. I, I can walk out, I can walk into, you know, when I still sell in my business clearly yep. and engage with clients. I walk out, I don't naturally, you know, consciously observe all of the things, but I walk out and what I always do is I walk out and I sit and I don't drive off to the next appointment. I sit just for a minute and think, mm. what did I see here? Yeah. Yeah, what did I see? And would that and, get like noted in your CRM or maybe just a conscious? Yeah. The best way to do it, if you're, if you're managing a, certainly a business with a CRM, is just as you've got their name and address and job title, you should have their, I think that's their really behavioral powerful. style. Yeah. And, and it's listed so that when anybody else goes to see them, they can say, oh, I know what to expect. Yeah. I'm gonna get somebody who's really dominant, you know, so I better up my game. I better be, you know, um, mm. more assertive back or, you know, it's about matching and mirroring the style. Yeah. You know, we now know why that works because the science of mirror neurons have proved why we all do that. You know, mirror neurons are, are fascinating things, you know, in terms of the science associated with it. You know, why you sit there, you know, you'll have all experienced it. You know, I, I'm a big boxing fan. Uh, I, I like lots of sports. You know, when I watch a boxing fan, I'm there. I'm taking every punch with them, going like this and doing that. And that's mirror neurons working. You are replicating as if you were there. And you can get clients to do that. You can energize those mirror neurons in a client's mind by, by replicating and giving them the, the same behavior. So sure. it's fascinatingly clever stuff. I love it, I love it. And final one on this, because yes. the audience will kill me if I don't ask. <laughs> How would you profile me from our conversation so far? How would I profile you? Um, you're, you're naturally, I mean, if you, if you take the, 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 what we call the circumplex, where you've got two of the orientations are people orientated and two of them are task orientated. Okay. So supporting and adapting are people focused. Um, controlling and conserving are the task focused sure big picture people on the right hand side adapting and controlling yep left hand side conserving and supporting in more detail you've certainly got strong people orientation you wouldn't be doing the job that you do <laughs> if you weren't if you couldn't engage and yep. get people to talk so your natural behavioral style we're about the top of the circumplex but at the same time you need to get a result mm. yeah so you'll be wanting to drive to make sure that the product or service that you do which is you know, generating these things is the right product or service. So you've got to be able to be quite assertive with clients. So if I'm sat here and I'm going off on a, on a tangent <laughs> to somewhere else, you've got to be assertive sure. enough to bring somebody back mm. to something that they assert. So I would say those three are your more favored. I'd probably say adapting is, is probably your stronger preference, um, but it also might be supporting. I'd need a little bit more detail around that. But I'd say you're people orientated, yeah. but the task from there. Fascinating. That, that hopefully adds a whole bunch of context to the conversation. Yeah. And uh, with that, Mark, I've got one final question. Yeah. That I ask everyone that comes on the show. And that is, if you could go back in time and speak to your younger self. Oh, wow. What would be the one piece of advice you'd give him to help him become better at selling specifically? Manage your behavioral style more effectively. Manage your selling style, mm. you know, in the context of what you're selling and who you're selling to. If I'd have learned that 25 years ago, <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, I'd have been on a beach right now. <laughs> Enjoying the. Well, fruit there's too. some motivation for the it's audience. Managing your behavioural style. If, you, if people can really get into that and learn to be that chameleon, yeah, and more effectively, but become a people watcher, mm. not a stalker, a watcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you, you you made that definition there. Before, Absolutely. Before the police get involved with the content. <laughs> Absolutely. Or the mark, tell us where we can find out more about you. It clearly, this is fascinating. Yeah. And where we can find out everything that you do in the business as well. Okay. Um, my, my organization is called Seller Performance. I've been running my own sales consultancy business for the last six years. You can find us on www.sellerperformance.co.uk. Um, and uh, yeah, go, go to the website, find information. The tool that we use is something called Life Orientations. I, again, go to the website for lifeorientations.com and you'll find information there with links to us. So, you know, uh, get in touch when I find out more. I, as you can probably tell, I'm fascinated by the subject. Yeah, of course. Uh, and, and love the topic. Uh, uh, I think I got into sales because I want to find out why, mm. um, you know, if I can get you to do something you've never even thought about doing before because I can persuade you, that's a, that's a real trick and that's a real uh, characteristic which I love to do. And you can learn it. You can be taught to do it better. Amazing stuff. Well, we'll link to all that in the show notes of this episode of salesandpodcast.com. With that, Mark, thank, thank you, you very for much. the fascinating conversation. Thanks Appreciate for your time. it. Appreciate it.